The purpose of this video is to look at the steady one-dimensional inviscid flow. The, all those words are important. Uh, compressible flow equations. So we have a one-dimensional flow shown in the sketch. Uh, let's imagine that the uh, density is rho 1, v1 is a velocity, p1 is a pressure, t1 is a temperature on the upstream side and then uh, rho 2, v2, p2, t2 are the same quantities on the other side, right? So you can imagine a one-dimensional control volume that we draw around this so we can think of this as unit cross-sectional area perpendicular to our sketch. So if we apply conservation of mass to this control volume, uh, which basically says rho AV is a constant. Remember, area is just one, one unit cross-sectional area. So it simply says rho 1 V1 equals rho 2 V2. This is a statement of conservation of mass. If I look at Newton's second law applied to this control volume, yes, there are pressure forces which are going to act uh, perpendicular to the surface. And likewise, pressure forces on the right edge at a, at a value P2 will act to the left on the right side. And let's imagine our x direction uh, is as shown in the sketch, right? So we apply Newton's second law in the x direction. And you can easily verify this is simply going to be rho 2 v2 squared minus rho 1 v1 squared. Remember where the inflow and the outflow occurs, that will de determine these signs, uh, equals uh, p1 times the area of cross section is going to act in the positive x direction, the cross sectional area is 1 and then uh, P2 times cross-sectional area acting in the negative direction. So that's P1 minus P2. So in other words, Newton's second law really reduces to P1 plus rho 1 V1 squared equals P2 plus rho 2 V2 squared. We label this as equation 2. All right. So the assumption made is uh, we're not worrying about any viscous forces uh, acting in this problem. Right. So the effects of viscosity have been neglected. Uh, let's look at uh, conservation of energy, right? So conservation of energy, we can go back to the one-dimensional form of the conservation of energy that we've talked about this in another video. And I can write the enthalpy plus V squared over 2 plus GZ, Z being the elevation at station 1, equals H plus V squared over 2 plus GZ at station 2, uh, minus any heat coming in, QN net. Uh, minus likewise any work that's being delivered to this control volume uh, through the form of shaft work in net and then uh, viscous losses we know are always uh, a loss so in this form of the equation it will appear as W viscous. Now in our case since we have inviscid flow the viscous losses can be neglected so that doesn't exist. We're also going to make the assumption that we not, don't have any shaft work in or we don't have any heat transfer in so we're going to assume it's an adiabatic uh, situation. So once we make that assumption and we are going to neglect any changes in elevation, so once we do all that, uh, I apologize, we are here, I got to have a h plus e squared over 2 in that expression. So if we also neglect elevation differences, then essentially this uh, conservation of energy statement simply becomes h plus v squared over 2, h1 plus v1 squared over 2 equals h2 plus v2 squared over 2. So we label this as equation 3, right? So equations 1, 2, and 3 are conservation of mass, Newton's second law, and, and conservation of energy statement. If you assume uh, we have a perfect gas or an ideal gas with constant specific heat, perfect gas constant CPCV, then I can replace equation 3 by CPT1 plus V1 squared over 2 equals CPT2 plus V2 squared over 2, CP being the specific heat at constant pressure, right? So in other words, and I can equate this to uh, CP times T0, where T0 is a stagnation temperature. And the way to think about the stagnation temperature is the temperature that would be achieved by the fluid if the velocity over here, the V1 or V2, is actually reduced to zero. And so if the kinetic energy is decreasing, then consequently the thermal energy or the internal energy has to increase, which is what would lead to the temperature rising up to the stagnation temperature T0. So you can think of this as if you wish, you can also think of this as the defining equation for stagnation uh, temperature. So I label this as equation 4. Remember, equation 4 is not different from equation 3. Equation 4 
is a restatement for equation three for an ideal gas with constant CP and CV, which we label as a perfect gas, all right? So uh, what we can do is we can take equation four and we can divide both sides by, uh, I'm gonna re rewrite equation for the following manner. I'm gonna write that as CPT plus half B squared anywhere in the flow equals CP times T naught, where T naught is the stagnation temperature. All right. Whether the stagnation temperature, whether the flow actually stagnates or not is not relevant. Every point you can define a stagnation temperature. All right. Now I can divide both sides by CPT, in which case I have 1 plus uh, V squared over 2 CPT equals T naught divided by T. All right. And uh, we're talking about an ideal gas. And so now I can replace the CP over here as gamma R over gamma minus 1, ideal gas with constant specific heats. And, uh, and then you also notice that we are going to get this term gamma RT as a result, which we know can be replaced by the speed of sound C squared, right? So if I make that substitution, I'm going to get 1 plus V squared over 2. I'm going to write that as gamma RT divided by gamma minus 1 equals T naught divided by T, right? And I can rearrange this and write this as T naught divided by T equals 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2. And then I can replace uh, gamma RT like we talked about earlier is C squared. And then I'm left with V squared over C squared, which I'm going to write that as the square of the Mach number. All right, so I'm going to replace this, call this equation A. All right, so uh, remember Mach number squared is simply V squared over C squared by definition of Mach number, okay? So we have a relationship between stagnation temperature and local temperature in terms of the Mach number. Now, in an earlier video, we got the following result uh, for isentropic flow. So P divided by T raised to gamma over gamma minus 1 equals a constant. And we also got the relationship P divided by rho to the power gamma equals constant, right? This was in the context of uh, obtaining an expression for the speed of sound. All right, so if I take these into effect, uh, and if I look at equation A, uh, so using equation A, I can write down uh, P naught over P. I can write that as T naught divided by T to the power gamma over gamma minus 1, right? So this evolves from this equation and then tying it back to equation A. So P naught uh, divided by T naught to the power gamma over gamma minus 1 has to equal P divided by T to the power gamma over gamma minus 1. And I rearrange this expression, so I got the pressures on the left-hand side and the temperatures on the right-hand side of this equation. And so this has to equal 1 plus gamma min minus 1 over 2 times the square of the Mach number to the power gamma over gamma minus 1, right? And similarly, one can work out that the density ratio, stagnation density divided by density should be uh, T naught divided by T to the power 1 over gamma minus 1. And so this will turn out to be 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times M squared to the power 1 over gamma minus 1, right? So we can label this as equation C and uh, we label this as equation B, right? So A, B, and C relate the stagnation pressure, stagnation density, and stagnation temperature to the local flow Mach number, right? And the assumptions are very clear. This is for one-dimensional inviscid flow analysis of the fluid for a perfect gas, which is an ideal gas with constant specific heats.